Hello and welcome. In this video today, we're going to be doing a colored pencil drawing. This is going to be kind of a challenge for me since I haven't done colored pencils in a very long time. Generally, growing up when I would do drawings, I never really used color in any fashion, whether it was markers, pencil. I always stuck to black and gray, just straight up pencil, not even charcoal. A lot of the time I would just do drawings with like a graphite pencil and spend an inordinate amount of time trying to do shading with something that's not made for shading. Why did I do that? Because I was probably lazy and I didn't want to swap through utensils. But now we're going to go back and use colored pencils, except this time I'm not going to use some crappy Crayolas. I got some Prismacolor pencils here, an entire case of these things, and a wide range of color variety. So I still have a graphite little mechanical pencil to do some of the sketch work. And then I might use some of these markers that I got to do some ink lines, maybe, I don't know. Depends on how I'm feeling when I put the piece together. I don't really have a plan of what I'm going to create going into this. So we'll kind of figure that out as I get down onto the paper and see what comes to me and what inspiration I have. My thoughts going into this is that I remember a challenge of colored pencils and the streakiness of the paper and the pencil going together to try and get like an even smooth blend of color and also do shading and fades to darker colors or white, um, stuff like that. But I'm hoping that with this set of colored pencils being a bit higher quality, that the way it goes down on paper will be a lot better. This is gonna be a completely new experience for me. I haven't done a full piece of work with colored pencils maybe since I was a kid, I don't know. Maybe 10, 10 years old, something like that. I was just thinking another thing that annoyed me about colored pencils in general is having to sharpen them all the time and making sure that you sharpen it at the right points so you can get the right amount of detail and texture on the paper. Other than that, I don't really have a whole lot of experience, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, I think what I'll do is a little experiment up front, just um, some random scribbles on a piece of paper to see how it works and how it feels and then go from there. So let's just go get to the video.
And there you have it. I'm pretty happy with this overall. Um, there's some things I'm just gonna go outright and call myself out on. One of the biggest problems I have with this piece is the angle of the arm holding the sword. There was something I kind of messed up and I didn't realize it until I had already put the ink down and there was no going back at that point, is that I should have probably had the shoulder overlapping in front of the chest, but with the way it looks in this, it kind of gets a little muddled and confusing with the force perspective. The shoulder probably should have been more visible so it kind of has a weird perspective problem with that area but overall i like the way the sword came out and the way it looks with the perspective like holding the sword out to the person in front of them another interesting thing is when i started drawing this i actually didn't know where it was going to go i envisioned a character standing there with a sword and shield and everything and then it kind of evolved into an elf i drew the face and then I was starting to draw the ears and I said, screw it, I'll just draw the ears like elf length. And then it started to evolve into that. And then I added the more crazy eyebrows that extend out from there and it turned into an elf. And then while I was going through the process of drawing this, it turned into a ghost elf. Uh, I kind of got to the point where I was drawing the legs and I was like, you know, I could just like make this little wispy stuff coming out instead of drawing legs. And then now all of a sudden you have a ghost elf kind of improvised on the spot when I was creating this one. So then I kind of added in the green and blue tones and added some veiny structures to the arms and the neck, which I think made it a really cool aesthetic for like an undead type elf warrior. And initially I was thinking that it would be aggressively pointing the sword at the person in front of them. But then given that thing I was talking about with the arm perspective, it almost looked like it could be also just handing the sword to you as uh, presenting for you to take or something like that. So then I started to think that maybe the sword, while it looks pretty basic and not extravagant, could be like a special item gifted to a person by the undead, maybe an ancestor or something like that. When I was starting to put the color down with the pencil, I actually thought that the lines from the ink were starting to smudge, like maybe they were still wet and I was smearing it around. And so I took some time to just flap the paper through the air to get some air current to try and dry it out faster. And I don't think that was actually happening in the first place. Uh, what I believe was going on is that the colored pencil was just kind of layering with the yellow that I started with uh, on top of the lines and kind of making them look a little more faint. And that's something that I found during this process of experimenting with the Prismacolor pencils is that they're like a softer pastel type pencil. And then as I went through the rest of the process of drawing this and coloring it, I found that the pencil kind of reminded me strangely of crayons. I did another video where I experimented with Crayola crayons and did a piece of work there and the way that the colored pencil from Prismacolor goes down on the paper and stacks with itself kind of feels like that oily waxy kind of texture when it's on the page. As a result I found that it blended really well with itself and you could use the white colored pencil to go in and lighten things up but also kind of smooth it out and smear it so it gets a even gradient of color, which I was really happy with. Of course, I also want to clarify, I'm not trying to belittle this pencil because I compared it to a crayon. I really like these a lot and I definitely would use them more in the future. So the specific type of colored pencil is the Prismacolor Premier. I forget if there's a more specific example of this, but there's different types. There are harder pencils, softer, and this one kind of lends itself to that blending gradient type thing, which also I think came through really well in the hair color that I did. It was a mixture of like a blonde and orange and the way it looks in, in flows, I think came out really well. I also used the white colored pencil to try and soften the lines on the edge of the hair where I envisioned the light source coming from. So yeah, I would definitely recommend these for any kind of creation you want to experiment with. All right, let me know how you think about this uh, down in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe if you want more content like this, more drawing and art, fun things that we come up with in the future.